When it comes to retouching photographs in Photoshop, there are a lot of different tools that you can apply to do certain things to improve the look of your images. In this lesson, we're going to talk about smoothing skin, retouching blemishes, removing under eye circles, whitening eyes, whitening teeth, brightening irises, and sharpening eyes. To begin, we have our background layer selected. We're gonna start with smoothing the skin. First, grab your lasso tool and you'll make a selection of all the areas that include skin. So that would be the head, neck, ears, anywhere that's showing skin. I'm not gonna to worry too much about precision here since this is a demonstration, but just to give you a general idea of how this is going to look. You'll copy your selection and paste it onto its own layer. And now we're going to apply what's called a surface blur to that new selected layer. In the filter menu, choose the blur option and choose surface blur at the very bottom. If you need to, you can increase or decrease the zoom by clicking the plus or minus buttons, and then you'll just adjust the radius and the threshold to determine how much smoothing will be applied. You can toggle back and forth between the before and after just by clicking on this large thumbnail here. The radius should probably be somewhere between 5 and 20 depending on your particular image and the threshold should be anywhere between 10 and 20 again depending on your particular image and how much smoothing you'd like to apply. I think a little goes a long way and you don't want it to look too unnatural so I would keep it somewhere in this range for this type of a beauty image. Click OK to accept those changes. And now you can notice if I toggle the layer on and off that some of the areas within that selection have also been smooth, such as the eyes, the nose, and the lips. Since I really just want to do the skin, the easiest way to do this would be to add a mask to this layer, which I can call smoothing, and then modify the mask with my paintbrush. So right now the entire blurred smoothing layer is being shown, but if I select the layer mask, I could then paint with black and white to modify the selection. So if I want to reveal her eyes, all I have to do is paint with black to reveal that area. And you can see how what I'm doing is I'm erasing the layer to reveal through to the underlying original layer. The skin remains smooth and everything else will remain sharp. I'd recommend doing this technique for the mouth, for the eyes, for the nostrils, and any other areas, perhaps even the eyebrows, that you would want to remain sharp and crisp while leaving the rest of the skin area intact. You can increase and decrease the size of your brush while you're working. And of course, if you go too far in any one direction, you could just swap the colors from black to white and white to black and add to the mask or modify the mask as often as is needed. When you're satisfied, you can reduce the layer's opacity if you want to. Now, somewhere between 100 and like 50% would probably be good. So it becomes just a softening, an overlay, not just this complete sort of fake thing, but looks a little bit more natural. So that's smoothing the skin. Next we'll deal with retouching blemishes. And this could also be for retouching scars, freckles, lines, or anywhere else on the subject, whatever it happens to be. That could be distracting from the overall intent of the image for whatever you plan to use it for. We need to create a new layer. So if you press shift control N or shift command N, that will create a new layer and it will make the new layer dialog box come open and this will give you the opportunity to rename it. So let's call this one retouching. Of course, you don't have to. You could just create a new layer this way by clicking the new layer icon and then modifying the name in the panel, but that's just another way of working. And now, because we're doing a new technique, by adding this new technique onto a new layer, it becomes non-destructive editing for our original background layer. Let's grab the spot healing brush which is at the top of the healing brush panel. This will allow you to remove blemishes by clicking and dragging, which blends the surrounding skin areas. Before you begin, take a look at the options bar. You'll want to make sure to sample all layers so that when you do sample, 
you're selecting everything, including the smoothing and the background layer. You can also choose a soft edge brush that's slightly bigger in diameter than whatever area it is that you're correcting. So if I put my brush here, I might want to make it a little bit larger. And also make sure that I'm working with a soft edge, which will improve the correction while I'm working. For best results, you should also verify that the Content Aware option is selected on your options bar. For CS4 or earlier, you would only be able to choose Proximity Match but CS5 and after, definitely choose Content Aware. Use the healing brush to click and release to modify anything that you see on the skin. Now, you could do this, I said, for freckles, for blemishes, for scars, for lines, for anything that you see that could be distracting. Besides clicking, you could also click and drag and when you release your mouse, the smoothing will occur around the space. If you don't like what you've done, just simply undo and go again. Like there's a tiny little scar right here. So I might just click and drag ever so slightly. And of course, if you zoom in, you can get even more precise healing with even better refined effects. Another method that you could use if for retouching is to work with the clone stamp. The clone stamp does require you to sample an area before you paint. Let's zoom in right here. So if we wanted to, we could sample an area to the right. I'm just going to increase the brush. Sample an area by holding down our Alt or Option key and then release and then painting like so. It's grabbing pixels to the right and then just painting on top. If you don't see anything happening, it could be because you haven't changed this current layer to current layer and below, or even all layers. So let's do current layer and below, and we'll try that again. Alter option to sample, click and drag to paint and release. Now I think for this one, we might want to go back to the healing brush or the spot healing brush. I'm just clicking and dragging to try and smooth that out. While we're zoomed in here, let's deal with removing under eye circles. Let's create another new layer. And this layer, we're going to call it Under Eye Repair. Select the Healing Brush tool. Choose a medium-sized brush with 50% hardness, roughly that amount. And set the mode to Lighten. When you modify the mode to Lighten, any transformation that you make will actually lighten the surrounding pixels. Then you'll do Alt or Option click to sample an area just below the under eye circle by holding down the Alt or Option key, clicking once and releasing. Then click and drag to heal the area. You may need to do it a few times. You may want to sample a couple of areas. You might want to undo while you're working a few times. Now this dialog box comes up and says the Spot Healing Brush Tool automatically samples pixels to correct a spot with one step. To manually set the source, use the Healing Brush tool. So we could just click and drag to heal here, or I'm going to undo, go in and use the Healing Brush tool, increasing the diameter, sampling, and then painting like so. So let's do it on this side as well, sampling and then painting. As before with other tools in the Healing family, you may need to adjust the current layer to current and below before you see your transformation take effect. If needed, you can adjust the opacity of the layer to give it a more realistic softened effect. So you might want to still see some of the details below, but soften them without going overboard. So somewhere in this range would probably be good for that layer. Next we're going to deal with whitening the eyes. Use the Lasso Marquee tool to select both of the eyes. And we're going to add to the selection, so hold down your Shift key to get the plus and drag around like so. We'll do a Copy Merged. This will copy everything inside our selection, and then we can paste this onto its own new layer. Let's label this layer Whiten 1. And now we'll select our regular brush tool, 
and we'll choose some options up on the options bar. What you really need for this effect is a small, hard-edged brush, and you can adjust the size as you're working, of course, with the left-right bracket keys. And you want your opacity set to 50%, so you're painting with opacity. And I'm just plugging it in with my keyboard. You'll also want to change the blending mode to color, which is down towards the bottom. Use your eyedropper tool to sample color from the whites of both eyes. We'll start on the right side. Now don't be alarmed if the color looks bluish or grayish. That's fine. Paint over any visible, with your paintbrush, paint over any visible blood vessels that you see. And I generally ignore the blood vessels and just try to paint over the entire eye white on both sides of the iris. If needed, feel free to zoom in a little closer so that you can paint more accurately. And remember, you're painting with 50% opacity, so the more you go over a particular area, the more coverage you'll get. I'm going to hold down my space bar and shift over to the other eye, and I'm going to resample so that I have a color that's more natural to this side. Then grabbing my paintbrush again, I'll go in and paint over those areas. By doing this, we're creating more of a uniform color space that gives the effect of clear, whitened eyes. Now this is a strange two-part process, so we're not quite done yet. Start by lowering the opacity of this layer to about 70%. Now the second part is to make the whites look even brighter. So we're going to create a second whiten layer above this first. Let's call this one whiten 2. Then grab your brush tool again and set the opacity this time even lower to 30%, but change the blending mode back to normal. Again, use your eyedropper tool to sample from the white of the eye, then go back to your brush and paint again. We're painting with even more opacity at this point, but it's continuing to refine and smooth the color of the whites and making them look clearer and cleaner. As before, hold down your space bar to shift over to the other eye, grab your eyedropper tool and resample, grab your paintbrush and paint again. When you're working on your own, you'll take your time, zoom in even closer to make sure that you do a really great job of this retouching technique. When you're finished, lower this layer's opacity to somewhere between 50 and 75 percent. Let's try 65. I'm going to control zero on my keyboard to zoom back out and you can see the before and the after the eyes just look a little bit clearer and whiter. Of course if you want them even whiter you could increase the contrast or paint with a lighter color than the sampled color, but you don't want it to look too unnatural. So that's why we sample from the whites of the existing eyes based on the existing lighting within the original photograph and do two layers with slightly different opacities and blending modes while we're painting. Let's move on to her teeth. Grab your lasso tool and rope around her teeth area. Don't worry about being too perfect here. Like for instance, I didn't get the top part of the teeth, but I can easily add to the selection like so. And we're going to do another copy merged and paste onto a brand new layer. Let's call this one teeth. To modify just this part of the layer, we need to select that area so that when we create a mask with an adjustment layer, it will only modify this part. Click the cookie button choose Hue Saturation, and then from the Master menu, choose Yellows. We're going to drag the Saturation slider all the way down to zero, and that removes any hint of yellow from the teeth. Return the menu back to Master, and then you can lighten just that area ever so slightly. So this would be darkening the teeth, this would be lightening the teeth. 
You don't need to add that much. I would say probably 10 is probably as far as you need to go. Now notice that my mask includes some of her lips. That's an easy fix. Select the mask, zoom in, and you'll use your paintbrush tool to paint away the areas that you don't want to be part of this mask. If you paint with black, and remember, check your opacity, I'm gonna put that back to 100. Paint with black, you're revealing. So if I just go around the outer edges of her lips here and just leave the teeth, the mask will only be modifying the teeth and not her lips. And of course, if you're working on your own, you would take your time and really go meticulously around the lip area. But there you can see before and after. You might also want to take the opacity down just a touch. And probably another thing I might do is put a soft brush on this with a larger brush head. Take the opacity down a little bit and just click once or twice to remove some of that area there so it looks a little more realistic. Next, we're gonna shift upwards and brighten the irises. We're gonna go back to the eye layer with your cursor on top of the white and one layer. Hold down your Commander Control key to reselect the selection of the eyes. We're going to do another copy merge layer but this time we'll make sure that we're above the hue saturation layer when we paste so that the eyes go on top. And this one we'll call irises. Now we're gonna work with a new tool that we haven't worked with before. It's this one here called the Dodge Tool. If you have any experience of working in a traditional black and white darkroom, you know the Dodge and Burn technique, where you can selectively add or subtract light from the exposure from your enlarger onto your photographic paper. So with the Dodge Tool, and on the Options bar, you're going to wanna to make sure you choose a small, soft edge brush. You're going to set the range to shadows and set the exposure to 35 percent. Then slowly and carefully, and I think I might need oops, a slightly larger brush here, slowly and carefully you're going to trace the outer edges of the iris with your brush and try to do it in a single stroke like so. If you need to go again, that's okay, but you want to make sure that this looks realistic. And also try to avoid the pupil if you can, so that that area doesn't lighten at all. The last thing that we'll do to complete the process of this retouching exercise is to sharpen the eyes. Grab your lasso tool again, I'm going to zoom back out just a little bit, and make a selection around both eyes that includes from under the eyes to just over the brows. Do a copy merged to get all of the layers below where you are, and then paste it onto a brand new layer at the top of the layers panel. We'll call this one sharpening, and then we'll apply a sharpening filter through the filter menu. So under filter, choose sharpen, and there are several that you can choose from. Some of these are like on-off switches, like sharpen. You either sharpen or you don't sharpen. Sharpen more is a little more sharpening than sharpen. Sharpen edges will look for edge pixels and just sharpen those. Unsharp mask is an older version of the sharpen tool, which gives you more control over the sharpening. And smart sharpen is a newer version of the unsharp mask tool, which has even more controls. So I'd recommend either using unsharp mask or smart sharpen. Either one will work for this. Here you can adjust the amount somewhere between 75 and 125 percent should do what you need it to do. And if you want to see the before and after, all you have to do is click on the thumbnail. So let's see what 125 percent looks like. If you go too far, things can start to look really pixelated and clumpy and unnatural. And if you go too low, things will stay much too blurry and defeats the purpose of smart sharpening. So again, I said somewhere between 100 and 125 is usually good. I usually will start putting my cursor inside of there and nudge it down until I feel like that's a good amount of sharpening. You can set the radius anywhere between one and three, and that should improve 
the quality of the sharpening. It may take a, a delay before you see what's happening here. I think for this particular image, we don't need to go very much. You might even be able to keep it down back at one. If you want to remove any existing blur, you could select Gaussian lens or motion blur. But we don't need to remove any here. If you want more accurate options, you can turn this little checkbox on. Now all this is in the basic area. You could also go into the advanced area where you have more control over sharpening, shadows, and highlights. So when you're happy with your results, click OK. And you'll notice the way it was before and the way it is after just really makes her eyes pop. Now the edges around the selection are a bit harsh, so you'd probably want to go back in with your eraser tool, a brush with a soft edge. Let's see how soft this is. Now set the softness to zero, or the hardness to zero, and just gently paint away around the edges of that layer, just to make it not seem so harsh. You could even paint with some opacity to really give it much more of a, oops, give it much more of a softening. And if you need to see where the edges are, just reselect the selection and deselect when you're done. So now that I know where the line is there, I can come in here. You know, maybe I don't need any sharpening around the center area. I just really want to keep the focus on her eyes. When you're finished, you'll zoom back out. And one thing I like to do is put all of my retouching into a single folder. So we'll group those layers. So you can easily toggle between your before and your after.